Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And a uh, funny thing happened, Hollywood started to burn to the ground mm -hmm. because of the shutdown, because mm -hmm. of the coronavirus, which we actually can say now, as long as we're not you know, putting out fake fake news. Right. That's what YouTube said. So we're gonna talk about that. So because Hollywood is burning to the ground, the Writers Guild is telling live action writers to go slum it in animation. Which I think is insulting as heck. It The whole thing is very, very insulting. And we're gonna talk about that because animation is its own thing. Writing for animation is its own thing. And now they're gonna push all these live action, uh, live action writers over to animation. And a lot of people in the animation industry are not terribly happy about it. Well, I don't blame them. Um, so they're basically, instead of being told, uh, learn to code, they're being told, learn to draw kind of, uh, maybe not quite because, you know, they are writing, but that, that's the thing. Traditionally, people who write for animation are also artists. They understand the craft. They understand how the whole thing works. And these people don't. No, no, they don't. And we see this when we've seen this before in other and other things we're seeing, I think with some of these shows that are falling flat. Yeah. They're bringing in people uh, that aren't from animation who didn't work in animation. They might have done a couple of things on the side of comics or whatever, or, or they went out, they were out just doing, you know, live action shows and brought them over and like, here, write this. And then you can tell they don't get it. They don't understand it. Yeah. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, so we have to backpedal a little bit, backtrack here a little bit. Uh, we did mention in previous videos that animation production is still going ahead even though live action productions because of social distancing have for the most part stopped animators are still working people are still working at home well, yeah you can work at home if you have the equipment you can tell you do it at home so it's still going so of course there's opportunity so this article came out a couple days ago in deadline um this is coming from the wga the writers guild and they're basically telling everybody you can still get work. You can still get work if you just go slum it in cartoons for a well, while. Like, I take it as you can still get work if you go take over their their lifeboat. Yes. And That's that, how I take it. And we're going to see this, you know, in relation to what we do with comics, we're going to see a huge influx of displaced comic book creators who are going to try to jump ship to YouTube mm -hmm. and jump ship to crowdfunding and web comics and all these things that they mocked for years mm -hmm. because that's the life raft. And, and animation is a life raft now, even though a lot of screenwriters look down their noses at people who write animation. Which is stupid because some of these animation, the animated films are, uh, you know, bigger deals and have better stories than what you're seeing in live action on, on some cases. And here, it just reminds me of, yeah, they make, they, they can still keep going. Hurry, quick, take their, take their biscuit. That is Push exactly Push them out. Take their biscuit. Take their boat. Yep. And that's it. So they put this thing out on deadline a couple days ago. They were like, hey guys, just because Hollywood's ground to a halt. Uh, many animated programs have continued production. As a result, we've heard from members that studios and producers are increasingly interested in developing animated projects. This is important. Um, this is an important moment to remind you that the WGA can and does cover writing for animation. So if a producer tells you the Writers Guild doesn't cover animation, that's not true. They basically go in and push everybody else out who earned yes, their spot. Yes, that is it. Uh, we're open to negotiations, writing an animated project. They told, okay, so here's the thing. Animation writers, most of them are covered by the Animation Guild because that started with animators. Animators got into writing stuff. Storyboard artists became the writers on he the says movies. This a lot too with comics and web comics, especially and things like that. They always wrote their own things. Yeah, so they're pushing in because they're desperate. The problem is, is there's been a lot of friction between WGA writers you know, coming into the animation scene and thinking they own the damn place. Well, yeah, because well, I'm a WGA writer. Yeah, but that's because you can write, just because you can write for one medium doesn't mean you can write for another. I mean, a lot of people can, but there are a lot of people who can't because they, they're they different story beats. There's different things that they look for. There's different yes. ways to, to lay it out. There's different ways you have to visualize it. It's it's a very different thing. Just like I've written books as, as I've written things as a webcomic and I've written things as a self-contained book. They aren't the same either. There's so many different, there's so much, there's so many differences. Like you have to end comic, web comics on a beat, each page has to be ended on a beat. Graphic novel, you don't have to do that. It's the same for animation. It's not written the same way you would like a TV show. 
like a regular live action comedy show or something. It's yeah, not the same. It's it's a very different thing. It's like having a playwright write a sitcom or something. I'm not saying people can't do it. I'm just saying they have to be able to think in a different way to do it. And a lot of times you have to think visually, which is why a lot of writers have some animation or art background mm -hmm. because you have to think like, okay, how is this going to translate into animation? Uh, a lot of the gags are visual and a lot of these writers are, I'm, mean, you know, because we talked about before, and a lot of people have been talking about how Marvel lately, it seems like a lot of their comics had characters just like sitting in a coffee shop and having a conversation because they're bringing people in that would rather be writing for Hollywood, writing live right. action. And it's not visually, it's not very exciting to no. just have characters sit there and talk they to They don't each understand other. this. No. Um, so you gotta think a certain way. So the, the uh, WGA is the Dominant Writers Union in Hollywood. The contract covers some high profile animated shows. This is a newer development, including The Simpsons, BoJack, uh, Bojack's gone and undone. They said, but most of the animation industry is represented by the Animation Guild, which covers writers as well as artists. Uh, animation writers can belong to both the WGA and the Animation Guild, and some do, but this overlap has caused frictions between the unions uh, because of the writer strike, right? The conflict arises from a quirk of animation history. When the industry was beginning to organize in the pre-war years, shows weren't scripted so much as storyboarded. And they still are, to the, yeah, the they, most part, they, they still they are. are yeah. uh, as such, writers fell under the jurisdiction of animation unions and have mostly remained there, even as scripting has become uh, integral to the industry. So as the shows became more lucrative, the WGA pushed its ass in there. Uh, gained yeah, the there's money, of course. It's like comics. You yeah. know, oh, I, you know, I smell money. You yeah, know? this is why Hollywood started writing comics. This is why you had guys like Kevin Smith out there pushing into comics yeah, and pushing in, pushing into animation because it is lucrative. Hey, speaking of Kevin Smith, why is it every other day they're covering him on all the, the, the pop culture blogs all of a sudden? Like, you, you heard about him occasionally, but it wasn't that much. Now it's like every other day Kevin Smith said on his show, Kevin Smith said, Kevin Smith said, well, if you've been following along all this time, you know that some of the things Kevin Smith says is not right. Uh, I think he's got a new PR person or he's trying to stay relevant because his live action stuff is drying up and he's doing I don't know, I just thought stuff. it was odd. Like, I mean, it's because I'm noticing it now since he got his, you know, panties in a bunch for you asking a simple question. But um, it's just he's constantly being you know, brought to the forefront again for no reason. So here we go. This is this is the reaction. This would be my reaction too. Uh, we have people working in animation who are like, okay, great. This isn't this isn't really good. Um, the latest intervention has elicited mixed feelings from the animation community on social media. Some of their tweets are republished below. Here we have Mass and Bateman. It's nice that the WGA is trying to cover animation shows and writers, and very happy networks are pushing animation in this crisis. However, if you're running a WGA animation show, please remember to hire animation writers who know the format. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. The format and the medium are different. That's what I just said. Yep, uh, too often live action writers flood into animation writing during a strike or crisis, and we're happy to have you. No, you're not. Uh, but very rarely are animation writers welcome to live action right. the same way. It's basically, they're slumming it for now yeah. because the WGA's got to collect some money, got to we'll collect some push out dues. somebody who deserved the, the, the job, you know, to take it until we go back to live action. Yeah, so WGA does have a blanket covered of coverage for animation like it does live action. Their projects and places are covered. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Yo, animation showrunners, WGA is cool, but if you refuse to be covered by the animation guild, then the studio can make all the designer and artist jobs non-guild. You set the precedent wherever you and protect your artists. Protect your artists. Um, this is interesting. Now, because of uh, COVID, they're asking new animated shows to go under WGA contracts, with, which will possibly take work away from us and give it to live action writers that will suddenly start writing animation because they they can do that. We just can't do the reverse. Yeah, so basically, you they can go slum it and take your jobs, but you can't take theirs. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to come in. And we saw this happen in web comics. We mm -hmm. saw this happen in crowdfunding. We saw it happen with comic book creators. Yep. We had comic book creators that spent years attacking web comics creators as being amateurs until web comics were hot. And then all of a sudden they wanted to jump into it. And then they were taking over all the positions. Yeah. Like if there was any paid gigs available, they were taking them all because, well, they are established. Well, we, as we found, just because you can write a superhero comic and you can write something that's established IP, doesn't mean that you can create your own IP and people will actually like it. When you're a webcomic person, you actually have to create it and have an audience on your own merit. Then, then it becomes a meritocracy and these people couldn't hack it when they weren't just handed an established IP. Well, we saw it. We saw it with uh, a lot. In the, the really frustrating thing is the comic book industry 
called web comics creators uh, amateurs mm -hmm. for years. They did. Um, they called crowdfunders e beggars. Yep. And then they they when they saw the money was there, they started uh, you know using both. But then they they sort of dropped it as soon as it wasn't hot anymore. Uh, at least with web comics. So, you know, we had Mark Wade jumped into web comics briefly, didn't get rich right away, uh, dropped it, and then walked away from it and got into. Yeah, we actually got caught up in something with that before. That's a whole other story. But we were like going back and forth for months over something like that with his stuff. But um, you know, here it's just this whole idea that we can just come in and take it over, and whether there's money and where it's hot. And um, I know, like we mentioned before, you were at that one convention. I'm not going to name names. But one of these uh, comic book writers came in and got a deal with with uh, webtoons and um he was making this big well i am so and so and blah 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 webtoons to neon when they were both guests at the convention close to each other and then he looked up our comics saw that our numbers were way better than his numbers and then he wouldn't speak to neon anymore because our numbers were better yeah the was... difference was ours because it was based on merit you couldn't just be assigned a comic book character that's already established you had to get an audience on your own yeah, and people they they like to just walk into a warmed uh, warm mm -hmm. seat, and sit down. Well, now these people are going to be taking characters and, and established IP, and they're going to write, write it because they're them. Probably. Um, this is funny because I just said this. I guess this is the in industry's equivalent to learn to code. Down the other side, getting mad at people for saying it and everything. Mm -hmm. They are. They're, they're slumming it. They're going to slum it in animation. Then once well, it's not really slumming it. In their no, mind, it's, it's not. slumming it. In their mind, it's slumming it. Because and, I think animation, in a lot of ways, is trickier. Yes, it is. It's it's way trickier. Now, we've got some people. Now, this is coming from Cartoon Brew. I'm not going to link to the article because last time we linked to Cartoon Brew, for some reason, we got a community strike. First one we've ever had in the five years we've been doing this, but whatever. Um, but these guys are they are animation professionals that frequent this board. What isn't being said here, so I'll say it, is that animated shows with WGA writers treat artists as wholly subservient to them. They procure their own wings of studios uh, if they're even in the bu same building, they have their own kitchens and bathrooms. Wow, like when they afraid your food's going to touch and then you're going to... Yeah, I know, right? You're going to get cooties, artist cooties. I mean, art yeah. Uh, their own food and amenities, they don't talk to the artists or learn their names. They aren't team players. Animation's a team yeah, sport. Yeah, I was saying, animation is very team-oriented. It's supposed to be. Uh, when shows are staffed with Animation Guild writers, everyone works together. More WGA writers and animation is a very bad future for animation artists, especially since the WGA, which has a history of striking, threatens a strike with every contract negotiation. They've always been happy to throw their weight around no matter what the consequences to everyone else working in Hollywood, but now they're dependent on another industry and union to stay employed. Funny how the worm turns. They created the situation they're in. I implore animation artists to only work for the highest rate when working for a WGA written show. You can't trust them and treat you well. Or not yeah. put you out of work. Yeah, that's sad. It's basically, like I'm better than you, so I, you know, I'm not even gonna associate you with you, even though I need you to draw all my stuff. And something like that, you'd think they'd want to work together because you don't like. Okay, we work as a team, mm -hmm. and when we do our comic, and when we work together, it works really well because I, you know, we can talk about what we want, and, and so I can write it according to what we want, and he can draw it according to what we want, and it's definitely a back and forth because if he takes it upon himself to change the script without asking me, he gets his ass chewed out, which has happened a few times. But we usually work as a team to make sure we're on the same page. And that's how animation works. Like the writers are writing one thing, but if the animator's like, well, this might work better, or this might not work in the way you're thinking, they can work it out and talk it out and make it better. In this situation, it sounds like they're just being elitist, locking themselves in their tower and, you know. Make my cartoon monkeys. And then they'll blame it on the, anima on the animators when it doesn't work out. Yeah, what well, blows my mind, because a lot of times, you know, again, animation's very visual. So, you know, if you've got like a gag or you want a certain, you know, thing that might, maybe it goes against the script, but it would work better visually, then, you know, for the writers and the artists to sit down and, and do that and, you know. We normally kinda, would work together, right. and, you know, board Storyboard it out it and talk out. about it as it goes. Um, this sounds like they're just trying to decide what's what without asking anybody yeah, else. Yeah, I'm gonna, and this is kind of the problem with comics right now too, is you've got these writers that come in, they think they're writing a damn novel, they write the thing and then they Oh my God, some of the things are it's nothing but text blobs. Yeah, and they're like, here, just pass it off to a writer and go do it where it used to be a lot more collaborative or in Marvel- It's more how, visual. Yeah, Marvel, how they used to do it is they used to give the artists usually a pretty, just a, a really rough, layout of what happens in the mm -hmm. issue the artist would take that break it up into like 24 pages and then the writer would go back and add specific dialogue to it and they called it the marvel way because that that worked out better but the marvel comics tended to flow better because they had all the, the visuals kind of worked out um 
it, you know, it was well, more Well, that's like kind of what they say. Like, someone might be a good pinup artist, but they're not a good sequential artist because it's a different thing. They're both good artists, but they're better. One's better at storytelling. One's better at dynamic pinup. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So, um, interesting, though. I think we're going to see a lot of people slumming it in different industries and it's, you know i said look look for it in comics you're gonna see all these people jumping trying to jump to youtube they're already doing it yep. badly uh and then as soon as they think the coast is clear they're gonna jump right back out but they're not gonna give a shit what kind of damage well, they you caused. know they're allowed to mock you when you were on youtube but you're allowed to say anything bad about them right right so then you're just mean then you're just mean can't be mean to them they're better than you are remember that remember that these people are better than you because they'll remind you every damn day. They will, actually. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.